Hi, this is M from Narcissistic Abuse Rehab. Our topic for today is 15 more traits of the covert narcissist female. By the end of this message, you're going to be able to spot 15 more behaviors of the covert narcissist female and their hidden emotional abuse. Also, I have a gift for you. Download your free copy of Are You In an Emotionally Abusive Relationship? It's a workbook I made to help you self-reflect and assess the health of your relationship. The pronouns are gender neutral, so it can be used by men or women to help you figure out where you are, where you want to go, and the goals you can set to get there. I put a link for you in the description box below. Now, let's dive into our topic, 15 more traits of a covert narcissist female. On the surface, covert narcissists seem vulnerable and sensitive. People they haven't targeted will often describe them as the nicest person they know because their grandiosity is introverted and their passive aggression often flies under most people's radars. They usually reel their targets in by making you feel sorry for them in some way. The strings they pull are usually fear, obligation, and guilt. And pretty soon, you'll find yourself doing endless emotional labor for them, reassuring them, and helping them achieve their goals. Covert narcissist females are very sophisticated psychological predators, so I think it's helpful to learn to spot as many of their behaviors as possible. I covered 10 traits in my last video, and today I want to give you 15 more red flag behaviors of a covert narcissist female to help safeguard your mental health. Number one, insecure. Unlike the overt or grandiose narcissist, the covert narcissist female doesn't hide her insecurities. She's easily triggered. She's often in distress. She'll complain about feeling blue, unsafe, and threatened. As her primary source, she's going to dump all of this on you with endless complaining. So if you take her out for a nice dinner, she'll ignore the gesture and focus on the negative. Why did the waitress look at her funny in the restaurant? Why did your mother write your name first on that email? Why don't her workmates want to hang out with her at lunch? She'll badger you with questions like these, assuming you have all the answers and getting incensed if you don't. She feels entitled to your reassurance. She wants you to take care of her until her nerves are steady again. Number two, disruptive. A covert narcissist female uses disruptive behaviors in order to control their partner, sibling, friend, etc. The way this works is she'll go after the things who make you who you are. One of the first things a covert narcissist female goes after is your self-care routine. For example, if part of your self-care routine is jogging, going to the gym, basketball, or golf, she'll disrupt your routine so that you make changes that suit her preferences and her timetable. She wants final approval on how you dress, how you wear your hair, or whether or not you shave, etc. It's different from a supportive opinion on your style because she's going to do this in such a way that you feel bad about yourself if she disapproves of your choices. She'll do this in a very passive-aggressive way, insisting that she only has your best interests at heart when in fact she just wants to control you. Number three, pessimistic. Your happiness is triggering for the covert narcissist female, so she'll say or do something to bring you down. She'll bring up something to rain on your parade, to pull you down a peg, to put you in what she believes is your place. Because she's not happy, so why should you be? Unless she is the source of your happiness, and she knows she's in control of your state of mind. The more malignant she is, the more she'll sabotage whatever is making you happy. If it's a new job or a promotion, she'll keep you up at night, harping on her problems, crying if you don't pay attention and give her a supply. She may even call or show up at your job at inappropriate times, and suddenly your colleagues are looking at you funny because they sense something is off. Number four, splitting. Splitting is a primitive defense mechanism we see in babies who have a very simple worldview. Things are either black or white, 
good or bad, right or wrong. Because narcissists are emotionally stunted, they tend to be stuck at this stage of development. And it's why they objectify others, why they idealize and devalue them. They either love something or they hate it. And this goes for you too, because narcissists lack object constancy. Because of their arrested emotional development, it can be hard for them to see life's gray areas. A covert narcissist female sees herself in the same good or bad terms. It's part of why she's so hostile. It's why she can't process negative external feedback. It threatens to bring out the shame-based, humiliated self-image that's always bubbling under the surface. This is why she's so threatened by anything she perceives as criticism. And you'll see a disproportionate and sometimes bizarre response if she believes you've criticized her. Suddenly her love turns to bitter hatred and you become the enemy because she's afraid. Her negative self-image may be exposed by your words. Number five, sadism. You may not recognize it because it's purely psychological, but she enjoys inflicting emotional pain and humiliation on you. Sometimes you'll see it in other areas of the covert narcissist female's life. Behind closed doors, you'll notice how she gets a big kick from watching her rivals suffer. She gets narcissistic supply from sabotaging the people she competes with, from seeing them disappointed and watching them fail. You'll notice this because she actively works against your happiness and your peace of mind. It gives her pleasure to see you frustrated, to see you failing. Number six, duping delight. If you're a survivor of narcissistic abuse, you'll have noticed how narcissists smirk after they've done something to hurt you. It's weird and creepy and another sign of their sadistic nature. They smirk like that because they're experiencing something Dr. Paul Ekman calls duping delight. He says that duping delight is the pleasure we get over having someone else in our control and being able to manipulate them. Number seven, dumb insolence. Hand in hand with duping delight is something I call dumb insolence. Covert narcissist females like to play mind games and one of their favorites is playing dumb in order to trick others. For example, they like to play dumb in order to get people to do free labor for them and then they smirk about it after the fact because it makes them feel superior. They also play dumb when you catch them out betraying you or taking advantage of you in some other way. If you call them on it, they'll deny your reality and use plausible deniability to gaslight you. Number eight, condescending. Over a period of time, you'll notice that you're last on the covert narcissist female's list. While you're stuck turning the other cheek, giving her the benefit of the doubt and bending over backwards to give her whatever it is she says she wants, She's decided that since she already has you in her hip pocket, that she should look for fresh new supply. Now she'll openly show you that your needs don't matter by prioritizing everything but you. She'll no longer hide how self-absorbed she is. When her cards are on the table, there's no doubt that in her mind, it's about her, her needs, and her agenda. You're just there to help. Number nine, overindulgence. The covert narcissist female is prone to overindulge in life's pleasures. She tends to do this to excess and she tends to keep the extent of it on the down low. Now, this is something that's true for both male and female narcissists. Studies show that narcissists have a deficit in the area of the brain that controls emotions like empathy and self-restraint. I've put a link to that study in the description box down below. Number 10, deviant. The covert narcissist female is triggered by social norms, rules, regulations, anything that reminds her of authority. She sees herself as above these things. They're for lesser mortals. She's a law unto herself. She feels no shame or remorse when she breaks rules, crosses your boundaries, or causes harm to others. The more malignant she is, the more flagrant this will be. Because narcissists are opportunists, nothing is off limits. Nothing is sacred and anything can happen, whether it's with your brother, her best friend's husband, her kid's school teacher, or her brother's wife. There are just 
zero boundaries in terms of what she's capable of. If you question her betrayals, she'll tell you that you made her do it, or things happen, or it's not a big deal. Number 11, Neurotic. Unlike the grandiose or overt narcissist, the covert narcissist is neurotic. She is defensive, anxious, and vulnerable. You'll see this in how she processes social feedback. It's why she invites your pity. She'll let you know that she feels threatened by the world and she needs you to reassure her until someone better comes along. Number 12, Financially Unstable. Many covert narcissist females struggle to manage their finances. This can be true even if she's wealthy. She may neglect to pay her bills on time. She may neglect to pay them at all, even if she has the money. This is often rooted in her sense of entitlement and her contempt for authority. And this is where you come in to help her out when she's in a bind, to take care of her, to pay her rent, to pay her utilities, to buy her a car, she will max out your credit cards and mess up your finances without blinking. If she wrecks your finances, don't expect remorse or regret because she'll find a way to blame you for what she did. One thing's for certain, once the money's gone, so is she. Number 13. Bad Childhood one of the tells of a covert narcissist female is that when you ask her about her childhood, she'll tell you it was all bad. In her narrative, she casts herself as the good person who bravely got away from the bad family. Her childhood was a flatline tragedy. There's no complexity or nuance in her account. There are zero good days. And she'll say this while still being in touch with the bad family and asking them for help, for handouts and favors. Dr. Craig Malkin of Harvard Medical School talks more about this. I've put a link to his video in the description box below. Number 14, Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude, feeling joy at the suffering of others, is the closest a narcissist comes to happiness. It will also come out in her sarcasm, in the cruel little digs she makes at your expense. When you call her out on it, she'll tell you she's just kidding. She didn't mean it. Or she'll point to something you did a long time ago to even the score. And finally, number 15, no one has it worse. A grandiose narcissist female is always on about how much better she has it than everyone else. But a covert narcissist female will claim that nobody has it worse than she does. No one has suffered as much as she has. She feels entitled to your pity and your emotional labor. She wants you to listen to all her problems, to sympathize with her, to validate her, to help her process all that she's been going through, which is endless. When you come to her with your issues, she'll tell you it reminds her of her problems. And before you know it, when you're in need, you still end up talking about her. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Now it's your turn. Let me know if you recognize any of these red flag behaviors from your experience with a covert narcissist female. And if there's anything I forgot, please share your take in the comments below. That's it for now. Be good to yourself and we'll talk again soon.